Cotney Attorneys and Consultants is dedicated to helping the construction industry with legal, business, and safety challenges. Welcome to this week's episode of Law and Mortar with John Kenny and Trent Cotney. Hey, this is Trent Cotney, CEO of Cotney Attorneys and Consultants, and I'd like to welcome everybody to another episode of Law and Mortar. As always, I've got the man, the myth, the legend, John Kenny. John, how are you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here again. Hope everybody else is doing well out there. Had another big week. It just seems it's hard to keep track. I mean, you know, we're, we've got a lot going on and just had a lot of great things happen this week. You know, what kind of stands out in your mind? You know, we, I know you are heavily involved with getting your estimating training out. Uh, we've already had a huge uh, reception to that. I know I've, I've gotten a lot of positive comments, uh, but what's what's going on in your world? Yeah, no doubt about it. The biggest thing this week was uh, starting Monday and Tuesday, getting everything ready, making sure everything was working, all the links. You know how it is when you go live. You got to test it all out. So, yep, we went live with the estimating training on Wednesday. Very well received and getting good reviews. We actually, um, besides just having sales from it, there there's people in the middle of already starting on it. So as they were purchasing it, they were starting the training. I actually have feedback already that, okay, where's the next one? <laughs> so we're working on it. We're getting them out there as fast as we can. We like to keep that quality at a very high level. So we'll, we'll get them out there shortly. Yeah, I, I knew there would be a big demand for it because, you know, there just isn't anything in the marketplace right now that is specific to the roofing industry, right? You know, there, there's a lot of generic stuff, but nothing that really goes into the level of detail that you provide. So yeah, when I was seeing those sales numbers go up, it wasn't, wasn't a surprise for me. Um, you know, John, what I want to do is, you know, normally we, we talk about two or three different topics, but because the material shortages and, and pricing issue is such a big deal, I want to devote this lawn mortar to, to that issue. And, you know, we've spoken about it before. We've done a webinar on it. I've produced, you know, half a dozen articles on it. I've talked on blue in the face on it, but Really what I want to do is, is focus on a situation where you've already got a contract that's executed. Okay, I know there's all these contract provisions, price acceleration, whatnot, that can be put in a contract that you are in the process of reviewing. Well, what happens if you have an existing contract right now, right? What, how do you deal with that? What do you do? Um, what are the best ways to go about sort of negotiating it? So that's the overall topic that I really want to focus on. And, you know, I'll just kick it off and say from a legal perspective, the first thing that I want to do is I want to fly spec that contract because oftentimes if you look close enough, there may be provisions in there that may at least give you some kind of colorable argument, right? So, you know, one of the things I look for is, you know, what does the force majeure clause say, the act of God clause? Does it include unavailability of materials? Um, if you check your AIA 201 contracts, uh, it actually talks about um, being entitled to additional time because of the unavailability of materials, okay? So there may be specific provisions in your contract that will assist you and help you navigate. You know, John, what, do you, what are you seeing on your end and what are some suggestions that you might have? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's worth the additional time spent on this subject. It's, it's a very serious, uh, and it's going to be very long lasting. There's no doubt about this. It's not going away. Other times we've had these maybe last four months, six months, you know, eight months. But first, before we get into that, just let's say, and you've said this before, Trent, on, on the webinars you've been on and we've been together. I'm getting a huge amount of feedback currently from manufacturers all over that are telling me this is going to go into 2022. Best case, first quarter, hopeful case, second quarter. So we're already talking about a year from now. So this is something you're going to face. So one thing you brought up a great point. So I'm always great with, I try to be great with operational tips, but at this point, if you got a project and you are on a contract that was not priorly reviewed by an attorney, you need to get it to us. You need to get it over and we got to look because this is critical mass. The other thing I'd like to recommend is that if, you know, you come down to, again, I'm going to bring communication and honesty. You got, you got that one side to look at contracts, what you could do, but now's the time to bring your vendor your manufacturer's rep right on into the job site with the owner, construction manager, however many people are involved, you got to have a sit down. I just got a call last night. Great horror story. 
$96,000 increase overnight. The job hasn't started and the PO was put in six weeks ago with guaranteed pricing. They said, sorry, no guaranteed pricing anymore. So this job hasn't even started. Everything was done correctly. PO was put in early. So it's, it's a serious thing. So communication, honesty, and absolutely you got to get your guns fired up here for some legal reviews and see where you can go with that. Yeah, so we talked about how you might be able to use force majeure. You know, it depends on the wording. Next thing I want to talk to you about is substitutions. So it's difficult because what we're hearing is the same exact thing that John just said, and that is there's nothing that's available and the stuff that is available, it's going through the roof in pricing. But you may have an opportunity if you have a decent substitution clause in your contract to offer a comparable system okay, or a comparable product. So you might be able to craft something there. That's something that, that it, this is legal at this point. You, you've got to, you know, having that one-on-one, that, um, -on -one, you know, communication is imperative. That's how you're ultimately going to resolve it. But before you get to that stage, you have to know where you stand legally and you've got to come up with some good arguments, right? Because if, a lot of times if you just go in there and fall on the sword, especially if you're a subcontractor and you're going into a prime, they're just going to tell you to pound sand. You know, there's nothing, it, there's really no additional consideration that you're giving uh, in order to get paid more money. Okay. So that's something that, that I want you guys to look at, not just the force majeure, but look at the substitutions clause. John, you know, what's your experience of substitutions and do you, you know, did you ever have that opportunity on jobs? Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, a substitution could be, um, it still could work. There's always that possibility. Somebody may have availability on material. And so you got to look at these crises two ways. What's going to cost you the most? Is it the price increase? Sometimes the price increase isn't the biggest problem. It may only be a price increase that everyone can live with. Maybe you got the owner on board to pay for that, but you can't get the material. So a lot of times if you look for a substitution, an alternate insulation product or an alternate metal fastener, something like that, that you, you know, glues, different things that will work and still meet the, the intent of the spec, you may be able to, you're paying more, maybe everybody's on board with paying more, but time is more important than anything else. So absolutely substitution is still an important thing to, to go through whatever you can possibly come out with it. Yeah, and, and so... We talked about force majeure, we talked about substitution. Here's a third tip, okay? Let's say your contract has absolutely nothing in there to help it. Let's say you've looked at it, we've looked at it, or your lawyer looks at it, there's nothing in there, right? What do you do? Well, the problem is, is if you go to your customer and you say, hey, pay me more money just because, that's not gonna really help. So we've been successful in trying to sweeten the pot and say, look, We'll add another year on our workmanship warranty, but you got to work with us on these materials. Now, this is not something that I made up. Here's a bunch of articles. Here's the price increase notification we got from the supplier and the manufacturer. You got to work with us. Okay. It could be routine maintenance. You know, maintenance is a great way to not only, you know, get your foot in the door for purposes of keeping that, that customer happy, but guess who they're going to go to when they need that reroute. So, um, or whatever work needs to be done. So think about that, you know, if, if you offer something in exchange, it may become more palatable to work with you at that point. And then the other thing that I would suggest is, you know, let's say you've got a $50,000 increase, you might not be able to get $50,000, but you might be able to get 25, right? And something is better than nothing. So you want to really think about what are some creative ways that you can go about doing it. Um, John, what other, you know, things do you think you could potentially add that, that might create some value in order to get that, that kind of change order executed? Well, I, I think you have to almost hold a hard line to a certain extent on negotiating when it comes to this. Um, there, no one is able that I'm aware of from what I'm seeing to say, you can't meet it. We're not paying you. And I got another roof or a manufacturer. I'm going to throw you off the job. You're going to pay the, it's not going to happen. You know, it shouldn't happen because there's nowhere else to go. This is a worldwide issue of that. So you got, you got to be that uh, thread the needle, right? You got to thread the needle negotiation, sit down. But I said, it comes down to that honest communication. I absolutely at this point recommend again, even in this instance, 
talk to your manufacturer, talk to your uh, vendors. If you can get a little bit out of the owner, maybe they can go back to the actual manufacturer and say, hey, you know, the roofer's going to eat this amount. Can we do a little something here? Maybe somebody cut a percentage off. It can happen. At this point, anything that you get to shorten your margin of loss it is absolutely worth doing. So we just gave you three different ways to go at this. I'm going to give you a bonus fourth one. Okay, and this is an expert level tip that we're giving you right now. Okay, um, look at your delay clause. Okay, because what you may have is if you've got a project that's over a long duration, if you were delayed prior to this issue happening, you may be able to say, look, as a result of this owner caused delay, it has bumped my schedule to the point where now this is what I have to pay for materials. Had it been on schedule, I never would have incurred this, right? And you got you to gotta track chapter and verse from your delay claim. You got to be able to do that. But I do this all the time when it comes to rainy season, right? So if you have a project that has been delayed and then pushes you into rainy season, when you don't have the same amount of, of time capability to get the job done, that's something that you would submit a delay claim for, okay? Now, the one thing you want to watch out for in your contract is oftentimes there may be what's known as a no damages for delay clause. And what that will say is you're entitled to additional uh, time, but you're not entitled to additional cost, okay? There are ways around that. There are ways around that. For example, if your customer intentionally caused the delay, that's a way around that. There's some case law that supports that. Okay, if there are other ways to go about doing it, so recognize that just because you have that provision, it's not the end of the world. What I really recommend is get that claim or that change order submitted. Okay, it's always best to come from a position of strength. If you submit a claim or a change order, then you can pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm just doing this to protect myself. This is what it is. These are the reasons I'm doing this. Let's figure out a way to, to absorb some of this together and move on. Okay. John, any comments or suggestions on that? No, you're correct on that. And if you're, if you're, especially if you're doing a new construction, there's a lot of new construction going on around the country, a lot. That has not slowed down. The pandemic actually coming out of the back end as far as the work opening up, it's there. So most importantly, a new construction is you getting to get photos. You need to get film, you know, videos. You need, if you go to these job meetings and they're promising things to happen on certain dates, you need to be out in that job site saying it's not here. Here's my photos. Here's you got to document it every week. You need to send your report of why that job has not progressed the way you were told in the prior meeting. You need to get into that into these job site meeting minutes. Every job site, whether they're still doing them Zoom or they're doing them in person, has meeting minutes. You need to state your case at every single meeting and then follow up with an email saying, per my conversation in this meeting minutes, I want to make sure this gets in. Then you've really built in a great case. I, I've done it many times over the years where everyone will say, oh, yeah, we, we got this. And then they forget about it. But when you got that documentation from point A all the way to the end of that, you've got a really good case to get your money paid. Yep. Party with the best paper wins the day. Um, you know, the other thing that, that I, I think you mentioned that's really important is, is just really thinking proactively about how to put your best foot forward. You know, nobody wants to end up in litigation or end up in some kind of dispute process, right? But you've got to make sure your paper in that file because that's the only way that you're going to come from a position of strength rather than where most contractors come from, which is fall on the sword, right? So as always, John, we like to end with a question. I've got a ton of questions here, but there's one that we got recently. I'm going to move it up to the top because I think it is spot on. And this one's from Elizabeth. The question is, um, and this is something that we've suggested in the past before as well. Um, a lot of times what you will see in, in contracts is, hey, you know, this price list or the prices that are quoted in here for materials are only good for X number of days. The question is, is how many days should you put? Well, I'll tell you from a legal perspective, you know, in the past, I would see 30 days, or something like that. But because of how volatile stuff is, you know, I'd be real careful with that. I, I've seen stuff change from day to day. So you may want to consider instead of using that provision, just use a traditional price acceleration where it says if it goes over a certain percentage, you know, whether that's 5%, I've seen 15%, you want to be able to say if it goes over a certain percentage, then I'm going to get paid for it, right? But you got to kind of watch out now. This is completely different territory. We literally have seen 100% increases overnight. 
So that's my perspective, I guess, from a legal standpoint. John, you know, what's your two cents? No, that's that's great advice. I mean, normally I'm with you. I always believe in, you know, there used to be 90 days and you get to 60, you get to 30. I mean, right now saying five days doesn't do you any good. And even in one day, right? But the best thing is percentage. So if you have in there 5%, or, you know, it's got to be reasonable, even 10%. Even at 10%, you are not going to get hurt because the, to a point, because these price increases are not 5 and 10% anymore. They're 25, 50, 75, 100%. So if 100% price increase happens and you're going to recover 90 cents of that, that's not too bad if you got these clauses in there to accept it. So Again, I have to say that that's the best advice right now is to go off the percentage method and when you're putting these in there for your cost to the job. Yeah, and, and so you guys know, you know, John, John and I, we are in constant communication, with manufacturers, suppliers, associations, contractors, everybody in the industry about this issue. We have been talking about this issue since probably summer of last year. We, we knew it was coming. Right, we knew that there were going to be price increases. We knew that there were going to be material shortages, and now it's finally hitting. Okay, it hit a little bit later than what we thought, but all the signs that 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 we were seeing from our data suggested that this was going to happen. So, you've got to absolutely be proactive over the next few months while you have existing contracts. Okay, moving forward, we've already given you the tools you need to succeed on new contracts. Right, there's a variety of provisions you need in there. We told you what to watch out for. You know, listen to our previous uh, podcasts or check out our webinars on it. But this is a serious issue. You know, we wouldn't dedicate a whole um, episode to just that one issue if we weren't concerned about it. So as always, if you guys have questions about this topic or anything else, shoot us an email. You can reach me at tcotney at cotneycl.com. John, how can they get you? Uh, easy, jkenny at cotneycl.com. And, uh, I, you know, it goes without saying, but we really value our membership. It seems to go up and up every episode. So uh, stay tuned next week for another episode of Law & Mortar, and you guys have a great week. Take care now. Yeah.